We're with Chris Gath of the Ennies. He was one of the judges. And they have an entire booth here just to show off all the awesome products that were nominated and in the running for a winning. And last night was the Ennies. So why don't you walk us through some of the things you found most interesting in some of these products? Um, so let's start here with Barkeep of the Borderlands, obviously a takeoff of the name. Keep on the Borderlands, the classic D&D uh, &D adventure. And so this adventure is a bar crawl through various bars that are in the keep as you're trying to get the information. So it's just a lot of fun and an interesting take without truly, you know, it's not a parody, it's right. more of an homage for it. Um, I'm always a fan of these guys. This is uh, Horseshoe Academy nominated for the uh, best family. And so this one you play uh, Pegasus, unicorns, or other animals. Their, their polymorph system is very simple. They've had other games and they're all really interchangeable. The family category is always one that I love. Yeah. I've done uh, RPGs for teens, so a lot of times I'm fine, trying to look for games that are introducing people to RPGs, or introducing kids into RPGs for the first time. It's a tarot card deck, but as you can see, they did a little bit of a 3D image oh, nice. with all of them. Very nice. Of yeah. the tarot cards, we actually had three tarot card submissions. All three of them got nominated in different categories right. because they all did something a little differently. And Decima not only is it good for the tarot deck, but it also has uh, questions, prompts on each card so you can randomly draw things to ask different players different questions to help them enhance the campaign or build off their characters when they're not coming up with the ideas on themselves. So Radiant Citadel is a great series of adventures interconnected enough so you run it all together there's that theme going through but hand picking them you're not you know grab the one in the middle you're not feeling like you're missed out not running the first four and not running them later i don't remember how many exactly there are you're not again missing out um for me obviously the inclusivity is great but as an old school gamer i also like that you'll find just enough references in there so I can still pull out my old second edition uh, oh, planner wow. object and, you know, in, to be able to tie that stuff in here. Because a lot of times, you know, your players will be excited about a book, they'll buy it, and I'm not going to tell them, you can't read the book, for, and if they right. read the book, it doesn't become useless to me. I want to have enough material to enhance their experience. Um, I want to talk about this one. Each of the judges gets a pick. And so, Void 1680 AM, this was my personal judge pick. It's a solo game, and I wanted to not only enhance, pick this one because it's a fun game, but also to show off solo games in the last few years, obviously with the pandemic, a lot of people's yeah. gaming habits were forced to change. Yes. I never did solo games before. Me either. And so, I started doing them. This one builds off the idea of what would you do if you're running a late night AM radio station? So what's your music list gonna be like? It's cool. got prompts in here to figure out what your late night callers are gonna be. And even though it's just a solo game for you to do by yourself, there is of course a Discord community and they've got a, basically a number. So if you wanna to pretend to be a call in to someone else's you know, AM station, you can do that and give them the permission to use it. I can see very cool tie-ins with Spotify for like playlists that people build for their AM stations. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just a little bit of a fun, fun. time instead of just sitting there listening to my own music. Yep. Um, we always get good licensed games. Yep. So uh, Rivers of London is new based off of the series. Uh, I was super excited to get this because I've been a longtime reader of uh, Ben, who I can't pronounce his last name, unfortunately. Did it did it stick pretty close to the book as far as the it the way really it was did. Narrated? It's a lot more investigative. It's uh, British, so it's got that unique British feel for their type of mysteries and investigation versus what you know you see more of in America. So that was good. Cool. Uh, Blade Runner. 
was their attention to detail on the yeah. box set here because it's got a number of maps on it. It even won cartography. We, right, because we nominated it for maps. And the yeah. way that they looked at the movie frame by frame to get everything, it really showed. Seven Sinners, obviously, Dark Fantasy is uh, popular, but what they did that was what I found unique. So you've got your demons based on your seven sinners, your seven deadly sins, right? But then they also break it down. You've got cultists, which are usually generic throwaway things. They specific, you know, the gluttonous cultist is a different stat block and different information oh, cool. versus your greed cultist. So that nice. was a lot of fun. So Vason sweeps at the awards. It's a lovely game. It's one of my favorite games. Um, <clears throat> Sword of the Serpentine yep. winner for Rainbow. best writing. And just the detail of the cover, the detail of the city, everything in here is a plot hook. If it can't be used in an adventure or to inspire an adventure, the writers basically said, no, we're not going to put that in our book. Um, we had this into the Sassin Citadel. It's got a little, it's got a more of an old school feel. It's also city based. It's a system neutral. Okay. So that you can pair it with different items. And there's a game called Blaze in the Dark, which is also a fantasy game, game that is set in its own city. While the two, while the city assumptions here aren't exactly the same city assumptions in Blaze in the Dark, as soon as I read this, I just threw this on the shelf next to Blaze in the Dark to remind me, next time I'm pulling out Blades, I'm pulling out this. Can't say enough about the Owlbear. Yeah, it got a big cheer. <laughs> it got a big cheer, but it's also, for all five judges, once one of, you know, the wife, kids, friends, sisters, saw the owlbear, the owlbear left with them. A lot of the product that the judges get, we donate back to the Ennies. None of the owlbears were donated back. <laughs> we were not allowed <laughs> by our family and friends. Historia Arcanum, City of Crescents, a fantasy version of Istanbul. Oh. The level of detail and obvious love through this book was spectacular. I mean, I'm not a historian or anything, but I always appreciate it when you, you can tell that it's someone's love and someone's passion, right. and then once you go through it, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to have to find a way for my players to have an option of going here. Right. Unexpected Wedding Invitation was, from what I understand, it was a decent-sized Kickstarter that I completely missed. So when it got submitted, that was my first experience with it. It's That's a exciting. pairing of Jane Austen with D&D, &D, but without losing what makes D&D, &D, and also without losing what makes Jane Austen's books Jane Austen books. And built on a clever mystery, all the NPCs have motives for committing the murder, and the book supports, hey, what if your player characters blame the wrong person? This is what happens. So it is, does not make assumptions that the player character is going to figure out the mystery, which is what I love. Oh, nice. Because many times my players do not figure out the right. mystery. We'll go with another family game, Color My Quest. It's a coloring book, but game. So you can see on the character sheets, definitely made to be colored. Yep, but within maybe this book or one of the others, it's also giving like art directions. So for the kids who want to draw in this style, it helps them do that. It's a simple game, but just the fact that it includes coloring in the characters yeah, to keep the it. kids engaged. We found fabulous. So Shiver is again back to the dark fantasy. This is city based where you're a little bit more monstrous in the rolling class and such. But you know, you open it up, very lovely and sections on it. There's another book that I don't know where it is around here, but this right here is the over city. There's another book that's basically the under city portion oh, of it. Oh cool. Household, which is the game where you're playing little people in the real world, or not the real world, it's more of a medieval fantasy type of world, but you're in an abandoned manner, and there's different factions of little people. Um, again, it was just one of those ones that I wasn't expecting. There's a, it all comes in a larger set 
also, which includes the map of the manor. It had an adventure path, a series of adventures, but also, which is much more of the different factions in the household and how they get along or don't. I want to thank you for giving us a little bit of a tour of the any winners and, and the uh, competitors. Beautiful product. All the product this year was amazing. I want to congratulate Free League, especially because they just got so many awards for putting out amazing products this yes. year. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us. Oh, thank you. I really thank appreciate you. it.